Hello everyone, this is Samira Jahangard, gynecologist, associate professor of Urmia University of Medical Science, Gynecology and Obstetrics Department. I'm planning today to tell you about the patient with gestational trophoblastic neoplasia with brain metastasis presented with initial presentation of spania. As you know, gestational trophoblastic disease, GTD, refers to a group of malignant or benign conditions. GTN, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, is a term for malignant tumors that consists of various types of diseases such as invasive nodes, pericarcinoma, placentocyte, trophoblastic tumors, and epithelial trophoblastic tumors. It is the most aggressive malignant tumor with an incidence of 0 0.18 per 1. 100,000 women and 1 to 9 in 40,000 pregnancy between the ages of 50 and 49 years in the United States. The risk of brain metastasis in GTN is rare. It's approximately 2 or 3 cases per million with 11%. Based on International Federation of Gynecology and Obstructive Anatomic Staging, patients with brain metastasis are classified as stage 4 and horrors. According to this Staging system. Stage 2, 3, and 4 are considered as high risk GTN and are treated with multiple chemotropic regimen. There were many types of chemotropic regimen that were used in oncology department, but the most common regimen that we use in our oncology department is the macro regimen that consists of etoposide, metotrexate, actinomycin, cyclophosphamide, and wincristin. In brain metastasis cases, an increase in intravenous metotrexate to 1 mg per square meter will have better drug permeation into blood brain barrier. Our case was a 34 year old woman, Gravita 5, Para 3, abortion 2. And her abortions were spontaneously, and he had a 3 vaginal normal delivery. She, is, she was presented with vaginal bleeding, dyspnea, and moderate abdominal pain and menstrual delay of about two weeks. In past medical history and past surgical history, there was not any finding, and he had no history of taking any medication. So we found in physical exam the blood pressure was 1960 mmHg, pulse rates were 120. Respiratory rates were 26 per minute, oxygen saturation was 93%, and her fundal height was about 8 weeks. In laboratory dates, beta high stage level was 132,600, hemoglobin was 5 gram per deciliter, the white blood counts was 11,300, and platelet and the liver functional test and creatinine was in normal range. So, due to delayed menstrual cycle and abdominal pain, the patient underwent abdominal and pelvic ultrasonography that was showed large uterus with completely heterogeneous myometrium and severe hypo and hypoechoic regions, which was consistent with molar pregnancy. The endometrium thickness was a four millimeter and there was no free fluid in the pelvis, abdomen, and ovaries were normal. So, patient also underwent chest radiography that showed pleural effusion in left hemitrox due to this pleural effusion, chest tube was inserted and also beta hysteria test was sent from pleural fluid that was showed 64,000 milliunit. Patient gave 3 units of Paxil and underwent dilatation and curtage. The final pathology of DSG revealed periocarcinoma. A spiral computed tomography scan of the lungs and peritoneum with and without contrast was down and showed a moderate pleural effusion in the left hemitrox, also the collapse of the left lung in the inferior regions. And as you see, there was no abnormality in the right lung, heart, and 
great vessels of the mediastinium. Finally, a round lesion with a size of 68 in 50 mm was observed in the inferior lobe of the left lung, which was consistent with metastasis due to the patient's history of choriocarcinoma. After a chest tube insertion, the patient's respiratory symptoms were mostly resolved and she underwent further chest radiography and CT scan of lungs and mediastinum, which showed a very mild pneumothorax near the tip of chest tube in posterior inferior region of left hemithorax in 60 in 60 mm location with air fluid level. And the collapse consolidation also was seen in lower lobe of left lung. Three days later, the patient became disoriented and a neurology consultation was requested. The brain CT scan showed no abnormality and also brain MRI was down and showed a small mass with a size of 7 mm at the right occipital lobe with several vasogenic edema, which was consistent with brain metastasis. So patient was started on chemotherapy with an etoposide, metotrexate, actinomycin, cyclophosphamide, and wincristine called a macro regime. It included actinomycin D0.5 mg IV bolus, etoposide 100 mg per square meter IV infusion, and metotrexate 1 1000 mg per square meter IV infusion for the first day. It also included actinomycin, etoposide with the same dosage and lacovarian calcium 15 mg orally over 8 hours for 9 doses, starting 32 hours after the start of metotrexate for the second day. Finally, the eighth day consists of wincristine and cyclophosphamide. She gave a total of four cycles. During each cycle, the two beads of granulocyte colony stimulating factor GCSF were given every other day. Only during one of the cycles, the patient did not receive GCSF due to fever, impairment, and wide blood cell counts. It was uh, 30,000. In that period of time, the patient underwent a thoracoscopy and adhesion was observed in the left prolar cavity, which was resolved during thoracoscopy. It might have been the cause of incomplete drainage of pleural effusion after chest tube insertion. The cytological study of pleural effusion showed reactive mesothelial cells, red blood cells, and hemosiderin-laden macrophage. We also administered 2 grams of intravenous ciftiraxone every 12 hours and 900 mg of clindamycin every 8 hours for 2 weeks. During the chemotherapy course, the patient's metastasis level decreased continuously and it was negative after fourth cycle. It also remained negative six months after chemotherapy. The final examination of the patient had not normal findings after treatment. The patient underwent the brain MRI and it was negative for lesions uh, and the chest radiography and chest CT scan also was normal. Choriocarcinoma is a highly malignant tumor that responds well to chemotherapy. The clinical presentation of choriocarcinoma is so atypical and varied in the majority of cases that making it difficult to diagnose at an earlier stage, thus patients usually present it in an advanced clinical stage. One of the most common presentations of choriocarcinoma is abnormal uterine bleeding following ectopic or normal pregnancies and spontaneous therapeutic abortions or a hydratiform node. Frequent metastasis sites of choriocarcinoma are lung, vagina, and the levy and the brain. The gastrointestinal tract can also be affected. Brain metastases have various symptoms. It is presented in the form of intra or extra axial hemorrhage due to intracranial aneurysm rupture, as well as the form of a subdural hematoma and infarction. Most papers showed that the Patients with GTN and brain metastasis was presented with neurological symptoms such as stroke, nerve palsy, limb hemiparesis, and also the symptoms of uh, increasing intracranial pressure such as vomiting, headache, 
uh, personality change and maybe less self consciousness. But in our patient, we had found no neurologic symptoms. So it is recommended to always consider brain metastasis in each patient that was presented with GTN. And also they reported the mortality rate of GTN is a 5%. Uh, but in patients with brain metastasis, it's higher and is 29.7%. Uh, it shows significant difference in mortality rate caused by brain metastasis, which accentuates the importance of early diagnosis in GTM patients. As in cases of chorea carcinoma with brain metastasis, it is required to use high doses methotrexate. We used high dose of methotrexate uh, for the treatment of the patient. Moreover, the neurological symptoms of our patients were completely cured after using the IMAC regimen without performing any surgery. Thus, it, in cases with focal neurological deficits, cranotome is recommended. While in patients without these kinds of deficits, we recommended immediate start of chemotherapy regimen. We can conclude that the brain metastasis may be relatively asymptomatic in patients with chorea carcinoma, and it should be considered by physician even when there are no neurological symptoms. Also, the MAC regimen seems to be an appropriate regimen for the treatment of metastatic chorea carcinoma. So, and the end, I sincerely appreciate for your time and your attention and wish you have a good time.